Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments. Continuing with muscles, bones, and joint ailments, starting with the letter A2 and B. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address issues with the skin, nails, hairs, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, then ailments specific to women and then specific to men, then issues of the hormones and metabolism, and then issues of infections, infestations, and the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility, pregnancy, and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems. Then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases of childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it is recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mere people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of a stooped appearance with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. And an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions, to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. Now I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with muscles, bones, and joint ailments, starting with the letters A, Part 2, and B. The body is a wonderful system of bony levers and casings bound together by ligaments and moved, supported, and protected by muscles. Where bones meet, there are joints. Most joints are enclosed in a sleeve or capsule of tough fibrous tissue lined with cells that secrete a special lubricant called the synovial fluid. The ends of the bones themselves are covered in a special kind of cartilage called hyaline cart cartilage, which is smooth and tough and nourished by synovial fluid. The fluid in the smooth articulating surfaces of the bones ensure friction-free movement. The largest synovial joints in the body occur at the shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee, and between the pelvis and sacrum. The other kinds of joints too, although these occur in lesser numbers. The weight-bearing surfaces of the vertebrae, for example, are separated by discs 
of fibrous cartilage with a tough outside and a softer inside. The vertebrae stack up on each other, separated by three shock-absorbing discs. The knee, because it is both load-bearing and free-moving, has a fluid-filled joint capsule with two partial di discs or, car or cartilage inside it. Where muscle tendons cross joints, there are special anti-fraying structures called bursae, which are small fluid-filled sacs of connective tissue. There are bursae above and behind the knee, at the top of the femur and humerus, at the back and front of the elbow, and so on. The knee is unique in having a small shield of bone, the patella, in front of the joint. Without it, kneeling would be impossible, and the tendons of the quadriceps at the front of the thigh would soon wear through or get nipped in the joint as the knee straightened. Every joint in the body has its own range of movement. The shoulder has the greatest, followed by the wrist, the head and neck, and the hip. Healthy ligaments check joint movements, keeping it within stable limits. Healthy muscles, whose inelastic tendons insert into bones close to the joints they move, also keep joints within stable limits. An extra, extra mobile joint, therefore, is not necessarily a healthy one. A hypermobile joint in the spine, for example, usually means that other vertebrae joints are not as mobile as they should be. If muscles are weak, giving little stability or protection to a joint, the task of stabilizing and protecting falls entirely on the ligaments and the joint capsule itself. Unlike muscles, ligaments and joint capsules have no contractile powers. They can only stretch. With traumatic or habitual strain, the joint becomes inflamed, causing stiffness, pain, swelling, and loss of mobility. It may even dislocate, becoming useless, because the fulcrum against which the muscle, it, muscle exerts their leverage has fallen apart. If trauma is sudden and severe, ligaments tear, tendons rupture or rip away from their bony moorings, muscle fibers break, and bones fracture. However, most of the muscular aches and pains that take people to the doctor, osteopath, chiropractor, physiotherapist, or acupuncturist do not have such spectacular causes. They are, result of, they are the result of poor posture, depression, anxiety, occupational demands, lack of exercise, and the slow process of aging. Bone, contrary to popular conceptions, is one of the most active tissues in the body. It is well supplied with blood vessels and is continuously repairing and remodeling itself in response to stress and load. Exercise and sufficient calcium and vitamin D in the diet encourage growth, maintenance, and repair. In fact, calcium, calcium is continually exchanged between the bones and the blood in order to keep sufficient calcium in the blood for nerves and muscles to function properly. In an adult, the manufacture of bone components, red and white blood cells, and platelets is carried out in the bone marrow inside the vertebrae, breastbone, ribs, pelvis, and heads of the humerus and femur. Ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune disease affecting facet joints between vertebrae. In this condition, the joints become inflamed, then stiff, effectively fusing vertebrae together, causing the spine to become increasingly rigid. This condition usually starts in the sacroiliac joint. This is the joint between the sacrum and the ilium of the pelvis with low backache and morning stiffness. If the stiffness progresses up the spine, the joints between the ribs and the spine may be affected, causing just chest pain or breathing difficulties. If the upper spine is affected, jaw movement and even eyes may be affected. Orthodox treatment is physiotherapy, steroids, or other anti-inflammatory drugs, and in severe cases, surgery. Homeopathy offers constitutional treatment and in the earliest stages the remedies that follow. Specific remedy to be taken three times daily for five days. 
For pain around the sacroiliac joint, aggravated by walking and stooping, use asli, as, Asculius 6C. That's A-E-S-C-U-L-U-S 6C. Self-help. Take calc floor three times daily and so and do some form of exercise daily. Swimming is especially good. Deep breathing for several minutes each day will help to keep the joints between your spine and ribs mobile. Use a hard mattress and sleep on your front without a pillow rather than on your back or side. That way your spine can relax into its natural curve. Avoid prolonged sitting, especially driving. If you have a sedentary job, get up and walk around every 30 minutes or so. You should also do as little bending and lifting as possible. If you smoke, try to stop. Bone pain. Bone pain is a well-known symptom of ailments such as influenza, influenza and malaria, but a persistent aching or pain in any bone should be investigated by your doctor in order to rule out hairline fractures and other ailments. Occasionally, bone pain is due to potassium deficiency. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily for up to three days while waiting to see your doctor. For bones that feel bruised, especially after a bad knock, use Ruta 6C. For pains at night, mainly involving the skull, nose, or palate, made worse by cold, use Arum 6C. For pains associated with flu or malaria, use Epitorium 6C. For rheumatic pains aggravated by cold, pressure, or movement, and worse at night, use Mazarium 6C. For limbs that feel achy, numb, and chilly with a feeling of great weariness when climbing stairs, use Calcarea Foss 6C. For pains that stab like lightning, use Floric Acid 6C. Bursitis. Bursitis is an inflammation of the little pads, the bursae, around joints that allow bones and tendons to move over and under each other without friction. It is usually brought on by injury or constant pressure. Inflamed bursae fill with fluid, causing swelling and tenderness. Best known con examples of this condition is housemaid's need. This condition usually clears up of its own accord within a week or two, provided pressure is kept off the joint. But if it persists, see your doctor. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily for up to seven days. For burning, stinging pain made worse by heat, use Apis 30C. For tearing pain with joints stiff and swollen that is made worse by rest and cold, damp weather and is alleviated by heat and gentle exercise, use Rust Talk 6C. For dragging pain and tightness over the bursae, and the discomfort is worse when affected limb is allowed to hang with general chilliness. Use Pulsatilla 6C. For shooting pains, use stick, Sticta 6C. For pains that are much worse at night, use Cali Iod 6C. For pains made worse by heat or slightest movement, use Bryonia 30C. For a pain made worse by the slightest jarring, and the joint is red, hot, swollen, and throbbing. Use Belladonna 30C. For housemaid's knee with pain in thigh when the knee is straightened, or a joint that feels bruised and weak, use Ruta 6C. Self-help. Rest the infected joint as much as possible and avoid putting pressure on it. Hot and cold compresses can help to disperse swelling. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.